All right, I mentioned Kyrie Irving leading all Nets with 27 points. He just got done speaking to the media. Let's listen in. Kyrie, after a slow start for the team, what was the spark that turned things around dramatically in this game? Uh, just our effort, honestly, uh, and just knowing that we just had to settle in. That's all. Um, and we needed it, too. It is, it, not every game is going to start like that. That, or uh, excuse me, start the way we would like with everything going down. Or, um, and you know, I, I gotta apologize too. I'm, I'm trying to think, and I just got out of the cold tub, so I'm like shivering while I'm up here. Um, but yeah, we we can't start every game like like how we started the rest of the games during this kind of streak. So we we just gotta turn the next page, and we put a few possessions together, and then we ended the first quarter well. Um, and I feel like that put us in position. Um, to take control of the pace of the game. So this, this NBA schedule, this is a grind. You guys not long came off of a long West Coast trip. Eight wins in a row. What's the key to maintaining this level of focus during this run? Uh, well, number one is just giving all glory to God and make sure that we stay humble during these, uh, you know, during these games. It's, it's um, you know, a privilege to go out there and be able to perform after you prepare, um, you know, with your brothers. And, you know, it's a total team effort. So we, we just want to stay collectively uh, aligned on, this, on the same goal. And that's just to play, uh, you know, to a certain level that we can all commit to. And I said that the last time. It's just we all hold each other accountable. And, and we just want to have that consistency um, and have fun doing so. A lot of smiles with the effort that we put on out there, um, you know, playing in front of our fans that are here in Barclays and also at home um, and also foreign. And, you know, we're huge, 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 huge team. Um, so I know a lot of people want to see us do well, put on a show for them. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Uh, I know it's a, a comprehensive team win, but I'm curious if you could touch on what you guys got out of Nick Claxton and what you've seen from him. He complimented you on how you've been leading and helping him out. Yeah, Alchemist. Yeah, the young Alchemist. He's uh, number 33. He, he's just learning from all of us uh, day by day, and he's been uh, working extremely hard to get back on the floor. And he, he wants to earn his playing time and wants to go out there and do um, what he can to provide um, whatever's needed, you know, and that's Nick. He, he's, he's a great young man, and, and we want him to continue to develop a, as a person first. Um, and then when he's out there with us on the floor, you know, he's around high IQ basketball players, and this is the best of the best, so we just want to pass on the knowledge so he can carry it on when it's his time, however many years from now. But with us here, it's, it's part of our uh, purpose to continue to help him, um, and he's doing a great job of just receiving information and applying it. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Kyrie. Uh, Bruce was saying the other game that you kind of go to him either in practice or before a game and you say, you know, you need one three out of him a game. And he kind of takes that to heart. Uh, I'm just curious about what you've learned about leadership in your last stint in Boston and even in Cleveland that you've been able to apply here as one of the leaders of this Nets team. Uh. Well, one, I think, you know, there were a lot of people speaking for me or um, speaking on my behalf that really don't or really didn't know who I was. And I didn't offer that access to a lot of people because it's just a trust. You know, it's just leaks here, somebody saying this here in, in Cleveland and in Boston. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about Cleveland and Boston because I know what that goes, where that goes and where that can go in terms of who you're talking about, what you're talking about. So I'll just generalize it. What I learned from those experiences was, you know, if you're not enjoying the journey and you're not committed the way that you would like to be committed, and, and I mean every day, you know, even when you're tired, even when you're having good days, bad days, and, um, you know, you got to be able to galvanize the group even when it's low and even when it's high. It's just the balance of leadership, you know, and, and there isn't one leader, you know, and I've had to accept that too. It's not on me to lead the group by myself and be the hero that everybody wants to, because that's what America is. That's what this world is. They love to build you up, love to tear your ass right down. And um, I'm, great to be in my, I'm, I'm grateful to be in this position to be able to set a better example now um, than I did then. And 
I take accountability for, you know, not necessarily stepping up to the plate or stepping up to the responsibility um, for my own actions. You know, I had a lot to do with the success and failures of the teams that I was on. I take, um, you know, my role very serious in, in terms of that, and, and um, I've been able to learn lessons from that to give to others. And um, that's been the most beautiful part is just to learn. Uh, that's the growth. So I'm just more excited about that than anything. And it's been able to um, translate here with the guys that are here. And, you know, I, it's always been bigger than the game for me is what I'm saying. So leadership um, now is just about having fun and giving those guys the energy, galvanize the group. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Rachel Nichols with ESPN. Hey, just to follow up on that, as someone who's watched you in those other places, your comfort level right now is pretty obvious, pretty off the charts. What What is it about the environment you're in right now that leads you to feel the way you feel? Uh, well, it, it's not so much the environment here. It's just life. You know, it, life has hit differently for all of us during these times. So uh, I don't want to take any day for granted. Um, I don't want to take any relationship for granted. Um, I, I just really want to see everyone do well in our world um, and heal, especially uh, during these times when we have just so many individuals losing loved ones. So it, it's, it's not so much about the game anymore. It's just more of us about caring about your neighbor, your fellow human being and being there um, and then uh, doing your part to make the world go around. You know, I know a lot of people enjoy watching us play and enjoy watching me play and it's an honor. And I give all the glory to God, like I said. So when I'm out there and I'm able to, you know, give the next generation or uh, even people older than me inspiration while I'm out there playing, then I feel like I'm doing my job. The wins and losses will come regardless. The criticism will come. The greatness will come. Um, and I welcome all that, but uh, with just being rooted in who I am. I'm not going to change for anybody or any moment, um, but I'm very flexible to understand everyone, what's going on. So I think I've been able to um, just just really be who I am. That's been the, been the thing. And on the tip of being there for others, what do you do for Kevin when he has four games in a row he can't play and we know what he really wants to do is just go out there and hoop? <laughs> uh, you, you, do, you do what you can because um, <laughs> We're, we're hoopers. We're hoopers. We're, we're not just that, but in terms of when we're in this, in this environment, we're pure hoopers. We have grown up playing in the parks, playing in gyms, playing against so many different people, and we don't, when we don't get a chance to do what we love, it's going to sting a little bit. And when your body's not responding the way you would like it to at the point where you would like it to, then um, you know, you're going to do everything to get back. So we just want him to stay patient, stay peaceful, and when he comes back, the world will be on notice again. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, Kyrie. Um, the other day you, you posted about maybe wanting to see a change of Kobe Bryant being the NBA logo. You've talked before about how much of an inspiration he is to you, how important he was to you. Why is it a change that you would like to see? Uh, <clears throat> well, number one, I think as a native black man, as a native black king, you know, I think it's part of my responsibility to continue to push our generation, our culture forward. Um, I, I know that it probably was met with some people that love it. I love the idea and some people that don't like it. But my thing is uh, paying homage to the example that has been set by that man. Um, he's 17 years old. We're drafting guys even younger now, guys that are coming out of uh, – different places and he was the standard for our generation and he will continue on and I, I want that to be something in history that is changed forever that our generation was part of that change and um, you know if that means that I have to lead that forward and get the conversation going then great but uh, you know I, I think he deserves it I think his family deserves it I think we deserve it as seeing greatness personified as Mamba and Anyone that's coming into the league should know that that's the example that was set. And I'm only saying that just speaking about Kobe. I don't want to discredit any of our other historical sure. players that have done amazing things for the league. I'm not discrediting anyone when I say that Kobe should be the logo um, because we have so many examples of guys that did things on and off the floor that were leaps and bounds um, for us to be where we are now. So um, I'm just saying present day, I think uh, it was 224. 
uh, it was only a year, year after the memorial. And, um, you know, it's just a refresher that this is the guy for us. He's the guy for me. He's my mentor, more than just an inspiration. I took a lot of knowledge and wisdom from that guy, and he's always around me. And uh, Gigi's always around me, and I know that in the women's game, we want to continue to push things forward. But in our game, too, we want to set a standard and a precedent. Like, this is, this is excellence. Kobe Bryant, logo. Yes, needs to happen. I don't care what anyone says. Black Kings built the league. It's exactly what I meant. It's exactly where I stand. Thanks, Harry. Peace. Mm -hmm. Last question, Tom Dowd with BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Kyrie, uh, winning eight straight games, we've seen some bigger contributions from Landry Shamit, Tyler Johnson, Bruce Brown. How important have these two weeks been for those guys just in establishing themselves with roles with this group? It's very important that they have the swagger. They need that swagger. Um, and that swagger comes with the confidence that we feed them. And we just want them to continue to ask questions out there to be at a different level than even they thought they could reach. And that's part of the communication that we have here is we want to continue to raise that bar for one another. We can all do more. And if we all do a little bit more, then collectively we'll separate ourselves amongst the group of, got, of uh, teams in, the, in our league. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing their growth continued. Um, but a few more games, a few more games of them shooting well and doing great things is coming. So just continue to stay on them. Even, even here, like we, we stay on them, just that standard, match it. You played in Miami, you played in LA, and now we're here collectively figuring this out along with other guys. It, it means something to us. So we want those guys to be on board and, and play well.